So welcome to this Instructable. Uh, I have to be honest, this wasn't going to be an Instructable. It was basically a reply to somebody's question. And the question was, how do you cut curves into glass? And uh, in demonstrating how to cut the curves, I've ended up with a full-blown Instructable. So this is a nice little camper project. It's basically uh, Tiffany style, using uh, uh, some nice coloured glass, um, copper foil and lead solder or lead tin solder and uh, as you can see I've got a nice little camper at the end. I think it's taken about four hours to do. So I hope you enjoy this instructable. So I'm just going to do a quick demonstration of how to cut curves in glass and uh, I've decided to uh, choose a pattern. I have found this on the internet, a picture of a camper and I've traced around the outline and then I've transferred that to a piece of card. And you can see on the piece of card I've put arrows pointing the direction of the bits because we're going to cut all these bits out and I've then shown uh, a right and a left side. So now I've transferred that over and I'm happy with the general proportions and shape. I'm now going to cut these bits out using scissors. Okay, so I've cut all the bits of cardboard out um, and the only ones I haven't cut are down here because this bit and this bit are going to be the same colour, same on that side. Um, so I'll cut that bit out of one bit of glass and then after I've cut that whole section out, I'll then make that line, because then that'll fit together nicely. Same with these little bits here. So now I've done that, I've got to choose the pieces of glass. Okay, so I've selected um, some glass. I've got orange, red and yellow, and some clear for the windows. And you can see here, I've positioned this front section on the glass, and then I've drawn around it with permanent pen. Unfortunately, I couldn't find the one I wanted, permanent pen that is, and uh, I've used one that's too big. Uh, but I know that I've got a cut on the inside, so um, how do you cut freestyle as such? So the way I do it is make sure you're holding the glass firmly, start at one end, do a trial, run, yeah, you're going to be able to go, and then start at this end, push nice and firmly, and draw away, trying to follow the line. Now it doesn't matter if you don't get too close, but you want to try and get as close to that line as possible. Same again with this one. You don't have to go too quickly, but you only make one cut. It just went under there. Try again on this side. Better. Do a line here. Line. Uh, we'll forget that one because it's nearer the edge and just go across here. So, we've now gone around all those cuts, we now need to break them. And this is where it gets tricky, this might not work. So we're going to go this one first. Okay, I think that's actually broken, but you can't see it because I haven't gone to the end. Let's just go to the end and help it out. Okay, so that went quite nicely. Let's try the other one. So this is a bit quick. I think I'd spend a bit more time if I was going to do this and uh, if I was going to do more than uh, one I'd make some templates out of plywood so you get a really nice cut. It's going to be a bit challenging. No, I'm going to do that. Let's do this one first. Let's just see. So generally that was quite successful. It's a good demonstration of how to uh, cut a curve in glass. So I've cut this one. I haven't ground it yet. Um, but it's actually turned out not too bad. Uh, you can see these fit relatively nicely back in there. If however this bit didn't cut very nicely then uh, you don't need to panic. You can even make another one or instead of using your piece of card for the template use the piece of glass if you're worried that it's not going to fit together nicely. That's just a useful tip. Um, but now I'm going to cut the two 
side bits here out of the red glass. So I've drawn out the uh, next two shapes on this red glass and I'll just demonstrate again. I uh, managed to find the finer permanent pen which makes it a bit easier to see. Um, so again start at one end and nice and slowly slowly but firmly I will say and on this particular one when I get to the end I'm going to run it to the end and then I'm going to go down here again working away and trying to follow that line and then I'm going to go straight onto this one Not exactly right, but it's near enough. So let's see how these ones break. That's not bad. Down here. Now our curved section, how's that going to go? Not too bad. Now I didn't, I didn't do this line down here. I'm just going to use the grinder on that. If you don't have a grinder then you're going to have to leave at least 10 mil there to do a cut. Now this one's going to be a bit more challenging. Is it going to go? Yeah, not too bad. So we now have the start of our camper. So now I've cut out these three sections and ground them down. I can see how they look together. Now I'm happy with how this looks. I'm now drawn in this line here and this line here so I can cut these two sections off. Um, that way I'll have a nice line that goes all the way up here. So just a quick demonstration, I have cut these two lines here and they've gone really nicely. Generally you don't want to be cutting two uh, smaller bits but they went alright. So now I'm going to uh, foil them up and stick that section together. So this is coming along quite nicely. Um, I've foiled all these central sections here. Uh, I haven't soldered them together, I've just used sellotape to hold everything uh, together. And then I've cut the two windows here. And I've spent a little bit of time grinding these to get the same profile down this side here and there. Uh, so the next stage is to do this bit, this bit, and along the bumper. So I've cut the next five bits. Um, I just wanted to show you uh, the issues you might have. Um, the bumpers want nice rounded edges here, so I'm going to have to grind those. The same there. And where I've cut these, um, it really was a bit too close to be able to cut that, so I'm going to grind that. If you don't have a grinder, then you're not going to be able to uh, do that. You're going to have to cut a bigger bit and try to cut it as best you can. So I'm now going to uh, take the whole lot into the shed and grind out these and get these all fitting nicely. So I've finished all the bits and I've put foil around the edges of all the uh, glass sections. Um, the most awkward bits were the uh, sections either side of the uh, windscreens. Um, and then the last bits I did was the roof and the tyres. So now I'm going to uh, tack all the bits on this side, uh, holding the bits in place with sellotape. And then once I'm happy that the tacks are OK, I'll very carefully turn it over, solder the underside fully first, then turn it back and then solder the front again. So as you can see I've started soldering, uh, I thought it was just uh, worth doing a little example of how I do that. In this little tub here I've got some flux, just use a paintbrush and uh, just rub it over the surface. You might see or might not see that's uh, going very bright, I think you can just see that. And same here, all I'm looking at doing at this um, time is tacking all the bits together. So once you've got a bit of flux on, Take your solder, soldering iron, and um, there's loads of different ways to do this. I've got a nicely tin tip here as you can see, and solder, and I'm just putting a little bit of solder on the tip and just putting it onto the foil. So there you go. Once you've got a few bits in place, I'm then going to take the uh, sellotape off. So I've finished tacking the front face. Uh, and I'm now about to turn it over and solder the complete underside. Um, but before I do, I'll just uh, point out we've got a little bit of a gap here. It's almost a couple of mil with a hole in the middle. 
I'm not too worried by that. Uh, by soldering the underside first, um, you'll fill most of that hole. And when you come back to the front face, um, when you solder over it, you should get a nice uh, finish here. Okay, could have done that a bit more carefully, but that's uh, okay. So I'm now going to flux up all the joints and solder nicely at once. I'm quite quickly going along here, feeding solder in as I go. Don't dwell on any one area, it'll get too hot. Quite a quick process this. And like I say, this is the underside, so uh, I'm not too worried how this looks, but if you can get it quite good, that's uh, not bad. Okay, that's looking okay. I'm now going to turn it over and do the other side. Around the edges here, I'll finish off right at the very end. Doesn't take much. Make sure I don't pick up a hot bit. And then we're going to do the flux again and then go all over it again. You can see here where that hole was. It's nicely filled with uh, solder now, so it shouldn't take much to uh, get a good finish around here. Trying to get a better finish here, so you can see I'm soldering a little bit at a time, lifting off and moving on, as opposed to running along like I was last time. Um, where you come to an edge, don't dwell on that, it will just fall off. As I'm doing this, you might be able to see that some solder is um, splattering, and that's because it's boiling off the flux, and the flux is causing it to uh, splatter. Um, I do have glasses on, so it's not too much of a concern. If you happen to get a hole like that, that's uh, where the uh, flux has boiled off, and just go over it again. So I'm quite happy with that, that's gone quite nicely. Uh, I'm now just going to quickly go around the edges and just um, put a thin layer of solder over them. Really doesn't take much there. Very nearly at the end of my solder. So it gives a good indication this was a uh, full length of solder, which must be about three foot long. Uh, no, two foot long. So there we go, just tidy up around joints when you're not happy. And that's basically it. Um, what I will do now is I will carefully put it on its side and get a nice bead around here and finish off the underside and just make sure everything is correct on the front. But that's quite good for an afternoon's work. So the key point to doing this edge is just to realise that uh, solder is a liquid so if you are holding it too far down it will just run off so try to keep it horizontal as you put it on and I just 
Do a bit, get a bit more solder, and do another bit. Where I've got this join, I want a bit neat there. Yeah, not bad. And I'm very carefully turning it just to keep it horizontal. So I've now finished this camper, but there's just another couple of tips I want to uh, tell you. The first is um, these wheels um, are prone to uh, breaking off if you're not careful. You can uh, move them around. If you're worried about things like this, you can um, use copper wire and uh, just bend it around the shape of the wheel and then solder that in on the edge. Uh, best to do that obviously before you've soldered over the edge. Um, and there's nothing fancy about this copper wire, it's basically just stripped out of uh, what we call twin and half. That's one mil twin and half, uh, just take the copper wire out and uh, reinforce the outer edge. And uh, if you want you can also add uh, windscreen wipers with this stuff and uh, if you're really feeling ambitious you could probably add a logo. So this is the last piece of the video. Um, you can see everything's finished and I've uh, decided to add a couple of headlights because um, I thought it uh, didn't look right without them. So I've uh, cut these two headlights out of mirror glass. Um, when you use mirror glass, obviously cut on the glass side, not the silvered side. Um, and I have to be honest, I mostly ground that into the round shape. Um, and then you can see I've added foil, but this time instead of just using the plain foil, I've used this uh, crinkly foil. Uh, which gives it a little effect around the rim um, and that's the uh, camper complete and I'm quite pleased with it so I hope you've uh, enjoyed this instructable and uh, if you're watching this on YouTube please subscribe